so I'm Dave Bullock. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm Dave Bullock. I'm uh, Director of Engineering at WAG. Uh, WAG is an on-demand uh, dog walking, sitting, and boarding service. Um, we uh, make dogs and their owners happy. Uh, been around for a little over three years. Um, we're growing like crazy, also hiring like crazy, so we're hiring all types of engineers, product people, so come talk to me after this, after this talk. Um, let's talk. And obviously we love dogs. Who doesn't love dogs? Um, so we basically have a challenge. Um, we wanted to increase the release cadence, like everyone does, right? But we also want to reduce the risk of that, um, that release process. These were our goals. Re increase the release cycle throughput, so more releases more often. Um, be able to quickly roll back if there's any problems um, without causing any issues to our customers. Um, do fractional deployments, um, so just small amounts of traffic going to, uh, to the cluster. Um, being able to auto scale um, and have it all be highly available, highly available multi-AZ. Um, we also wanted everything um, as code, all infrastructure as code. I know, I feel the same way. Uh, so our technology stack, uh, we use um, AWS, obviously, ECS clusters, um, blue-green canary deploy with a combination of Route 53 and HA proxy. Um, control all of our infrastructure using Terraform, so no manually clicking through the, the console. Um, we orchestrate the whole thing with GitLab, and it's all Dockerized, Ansible, uh, uh, Dockerized containers created with Ansible and Packer. Um, no secrets in the code base. Um, Everything is passed through parameter store and SSM using Chamber. Um, so let's take another dive, a little dive in that. Um, so ECS, um, it's like Noah's Ark, we have two of everything. So two, um, we have a, a blue cluster and a green cluster. Um, two um, container registries and two ALBs. Um, and we auto scale both of those, um, both up and down. Um, and both the, the container instances auto scale and the, the task counts. Um, and obviously we have a containerized version of our application that runs in each of those. So we use Route 53, um, the, the, the C name, um, the weighted C name for our canary deployments. Um, we, we, we also do the full cutover using the C name. Uh, give it a nice short TTL of five seconds. Um, but the problem is we don't trust third parties to respect that, that TTL. So we keep that, we want to keep that Route 53 um, in, inside of our, of our network so we control it. Um, but the problem is you can't target, um, you can't use a, a C name as a target for an ALB. Instance or IP only. So what are we going to do? HA proxy. We put a layer of HA proxy in, in the top. Um, all it does, it's simply checking every five seconds to see if that, if that route has, has changed. Um, and, and if it's changed, it, it, then, it then targets the other, the other cluster. Um, the, 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 the actual cutover process is somewhat gra um, gradual because Route 53 propagation just takes a little bit um, for it to, to propagate, even though it's in, all internal. Um, we control the whole thing with Terraform. Um, so everything is infrastructure as code. Uh, the full site, um, software development lifecycle for our infrastructure. So you know, um, cut a branch, code review, um, test it, stage, deploy it. Um, we use Terraform to, to scale up the cluster when we're ready to release. Um, update the task definition and pretty much do everything in our in our all of our environments. Um, so here's a little sample of some of our uh, our Terraform. Our actual deploy deploy switcher module is just dead simple. It just changes a um, it changes a C name. Uh, really 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 easy. And, and same with the Canary deploy. Um, it just sets a, a weight um, of 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 the uh, of the C name. Uh, we we automate the whole thing with GitLab. So full CI/CD pipeline for both our application and our infrastructure. Um, so we build the app, we bake the image, we run tests, push it to the cluster, deploy with a single click, and we can also roll back with a click. Hopefully that doesn't happen very often. Um, this is kind of what the pipeline looks like. You have like a, the, the first three things just kick off automatically. We notify everyone on Slack that we're going to deploy, push to the ECR cluster, um, scale up the cluster, and push um, the task. Then we can do a database migrations, we can do a canary deploy, deploy our workers, and then do a full cutover deploy. Uh, we build our base image nightly using Ansible and Packer. So every morning we have the freshest version of the operating system, uh, the, the latest packages uh, that we use. Uh, we, build a, we build a Docker image and then push that up to ECR. Um, and like I said, no secrets in the code base. So we, we use um, SSM uh, parameter store to store um, encrypted secrets. Uh, they're versioned, they're access controlled, um, detailed, detailed audit log, um, and they're all loaded into the app um, using environmental variables via, via Chamber, which makes it really nice uh, to, to manage. 
So let's see some diagrams. They're magnificent. These, by the way, these are our, our wag mojis. We, it's like a, it's a thing we have in the app where it's kind of like Bitmoji but for dogs. Um, but basically, yeah, we have like 60 breeds of of uh, of, of different wag moji. Um, so this is what it looks like. Um, so let's see here. So we have the external ALB, um, our layer of HA proxy, and as you can see, everything is multi AZ. So if if, if one AZ falls down, we don't. Um, the, in this state, the, the, blue, the blue cluster is, is active. Um, I know it looks like we have two clusters, but they're just spread out between the two AZs. Um, then once we, hit the, once we hit the deploy, gradually transfers over to the, to the green ECS. And here's what it actually looks like. Um, so you can see this is like the total instances in our, in our autoscaling groups. And so this is like, the, like the, the kind of end of the day or middle of the day we do, we do a, a deployment. You can see the, the load kind of transitions between the two clusters. Um, then you can see, like, we, you know, we do some other deploys here. This is where we, where we just completely scale down the, the, the inactive cluster. Um, then we scale it back up, do, do another um, color deploy. I think we, had, we did two deploys here. And then this is just the, the natural auto scaling at night. Our, our usage pattern is very, it's a, it's a nice um, bell curve because people don't want their dogs walked at night. Um, so in the middle of the night, scales down, scales back up. Um, same thing happens on the weekend. Um, so less, you know, we have less walks on the weekend for the obvious reasons. People are usually home, um, so you can see it just scales up with that really nicely. Right now, we have it um, set to only scale down to four instances, um, but at some point we will uh, probably bring it to two because it, it's, it's got room. So that's it. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or you want to are looking for a job uh, or know someone who is. We're we're, we're, hi we're hiring like crazy. Um, Dave at wagwalking.com, and that's it. So oh, some resources, um, and thank you. Yay! So I know you guys have questions. Shout it out. Why HA proxy instead of a classic ELB with an FQDN? The, 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 you can't use the 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 a target group of a C name. You can only use instance or, or IP address. So so HA proxy has the ability to like do the it's, it's called the resolver, and so it'll check every X amount of time to see if the, if the C name changed. Now you can only do instance the instance ID or IP address. Yeah. What's up? Any service discovery in this? No, we just use uh, DNS. So. so by the way, side note, we did, we did announce and release service discovery right. for ECS. So that is something that, you know, if you're gonna go and build something similar, it might be worth experimenting to see if you would do that in a, in a slightly different way. Yes. Both. Depends. So the, yeah. the question was, do you roll out features with software flags, or do you do it by deployment? It depends. So, depends on the feature. Yeah. So some, sometimes we just deploy it. Sometimes it's, if it's a risky thing, we'll, we'll do a flag so we can turn it off. Way back in the back corner. How did you handle the HA proxy network problem? I mean, there is a lot of traffic coming to the HA proxy. There is some network traffic issue, and the HA doesn't support like, that much network. What's going on? How did you guys handle it? So they're, they're, they're highly available. There's four of them, and we can scale it up if needed. Um, so, but HA proxy can handle a ton of traffic, and it's not doing anything other than just passing it off. We use the TCP, the, the TCP proxy version, so it's not inspecting the, the session or anything like that. So it's, it's pretty. We see almost zero load on those. Can you repeat the question? Uh, does HA proxy care about the port? It does it care about the ports? Yeah, I mean you, you you tell it which port you're targeting. So, so are you dynamically but, reconfiguring HA proxy on the fly, or are you using its resolve? It's feature? just using a resolver, so yeah. it's always pointing at four four three at whatever the C name resolves to whether cluster A, A or cluster B or blue or green. Any security add-ons embedded or no? Yeah, we use WAF on, uh, on the ALB. Cool. Are you running multiple services on those clusters or? 
Each cluster, so we're, we're a monolithic application, so it's a single service. You mentioned you have auto scaling enabled for not just your ECS. Shout it out. Tasks. All right, I'll come over there. Oh, yeah, so he asked about the, the, ta the, the, the auto scaling for the task, the task count and the, 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 the auto scaling. So, so, we, so it's pretty CPU bound. Um, and so basically, as the CPU of the, of the, um, of the instance of, 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 the, of the, the load scales up, the, we add more instances, and the task the same way. So it, it, it's usually actually bound by the total instances we have. The, the task that it wants to deploy is more than the available instances. So it just ends up, it ends up creating as many tasks as it can in the instances. Do you have a process for vulnerability management of the OS when new images are being built? So, so we're, we're building an image every day. If there was, if there was like a, a high-level security issue, we would, we would just kick off a build right then and then, and then roll it out in our in, in deployment. We just, we just have it update everything. So, so we, we just say up to, it, it, the actual Ansible process gets the latest versions of everything. Yeah, I mean, so we not not no real difference. We we're, we're currently in one region. We're going to probably split that into east and west. Um, so it's probably a slightly slower experience for people on the on the east coast. Um, but but yeah, we could let, we could easily just roll this out into other other regions if, if we want to. Currently, we're it's, we're it's a single deployment. What's your backend database and any challenges that you had with looping deployments? Um, so it's RDS, um, and so no, we don't have challenges. We we always try and build our our um, migrations so that they aren't forward breaking. So like like they, we don't we try not to change columns or remove columns we just add add new things to it. Uh, we're using uh, MySQL and some Aurora and we're, and we're we're rolling in some MySQL too, which is obviously not RDS. Just uh, what are your criteria for cutting over? And, and do you look at different factors or is it a percentage? Uh, are you talking about what's the criteria for like? Do we do we do the canary or do we do the full deploy? Yeah. So I think we just look at risk, and it, we almost we, we rarely do the canary deploy. When, when it's something we feel that could be very risky, we'll do that that one percent deployment. So, so uh, from a caching perspective, we deploy a lot of our assets when we cap you know, for JavaScript files sure. and so on, and we we, uh, we we you know have a cache busting you know like kind of unique ID inside of them. So when we try to do like like code deploy or blue green deployment. Rolling forward and rolling back really doesn't. I'm just curious how you guys solve that problem. So we do very little caching because our our each each experience of the walker or the owner is a pretty unique experience. Like you're walking a dog, it's one person is looking at the results of that walk, and it's and you're uploading a video. So that, so really like like the, 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 there's no cache. I mean we use Redis of course, but like we're not caching like like a bunch of web assets and things. It's it's almost all mobile traffic, like on the for, for the mobile Unless devices. You want to, yeah. Either way, there's actually a whole separate deploy pipeline for the for the website that doesn't use blue green. We just deploy it. So. Any other questions? Yeah, so this is this is so we we migrated from a non blue green deployment, um, but in, but yes. I built this from the from the ground up, or we built this from the ground up. So, the problems we had kind of when we migrated were that that we we weren't scaling the cluster up enough when we first cut it over. Um, so I was I was thinking that it would kind of like just auto scale up and we would be fine, but uh, we had some like kind of slow response times, and so now I added a stage in that just scales it to the to the normal the same level as the as the, the hot cluster. Say, say it again, I'm sorry. How do you carry out that kind of pre-scaling? So, so you just you just tell the cluster, this is, this is the, the amount of tasks I want, and this is the amount of, of instances I want, and it, it scales it up. So we don't, we don't, we don't need to form it. No, we don't, we, because, because the actual cutover is like kind of gradual. Like, so th it takes a few minutes for the, actual, for the full thing to, to cut over, and so it, 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 the, the cluster's ready, those instances are ready to go. Say, say that again. The, the, the old cluster will automatically scale down on its own, but we have a stage in there that says scale down the old cluster, which we do once we're done with our QA process. 
So how do you differentiate between a blue and a green deployment? Totally arbitrary. One's blue, one's green. It's always a blue or a green. And so when you're on the blue, you're on the blue. When you switch over, you're on the green. And when you switch back, so it's completely arbitrary. It's just, it's just a way to, to, to identify them. Which color is more important for you? Well, I like blue better than green, but obviously green is more important to, to whack. Since you migrate before you deploy, how do you uh, handle your old deployment working with your new database? So, so as I mentioned before, our, our migrations are, are not forward breaking. So we, we only ever add columns. We don't change columns. Um, so we're not like, so, so basically it just doesn't affect it. Say that again. I can't, sorry, it's loud. Do you do any sort of cleanup later, multiple versions down the road? If you have to say I can add something, then, then something else can be We do, changed. yeah. But those those usually, that's like when we're well happy that everything's cut over. All right, thank you. Um, these talks have been recorded. Uh, the videos will be posted online in a couple weeks, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and thanks for coming out today. Sure, thanks everyone.